everybody what's going on and welcome to guns and roses central and instead of doing you know one news video for all of last week's news i'm going to change it up a bit this week just because i don't have as much time but i also wanted to celebrate the fact that we interviewed doug goldstein it's our most popular interview we've done to date there's already been four articles written about the interview on alternative nation i'm sure it's going to be picked up by other websites as well so i want to first thank our sponsors oldschooltees.com they're going to be sponsoring our videos for this week and you guys can go over there and use the promo code gnr central and you guys will get 20 percent off your order at checkout so we want to thank those guys Let's get started with today's news. So our first news story kind of came out of nowhere. Steven Adler's brother, Jamie, took to a Guns N' Roses group on Facebook and lashed out at Axel Slash and Duff. So his post has since been deleted, but a lot of people were able to screenshot it. And I'm not going to read the whole statement because it's quite long, but I'll just highlight some of the key sections. So he talked about how his brother's a great person. He's got a great story of redemption. He said he's also got the biggest heart of anybody he's ever met. He also said that if only Slash, Axel, and Duff had 10% of the heart that this man has, then maybe he would be on tour with GNR. He also said if these guys had an ounce of decency, compassion, love, care, and acceptance, maybe they would have allowed my brother to play more than one song in Argentina after they flew him all the way out there and teased him to only play one song. One song only. The only thing fans want to see is Adler back behind the kit, especially since the world knows Adler is no longer on drugs or alcohol. It took him longer to drive down the hill from his house to the bottom than when he was allowed to perform on stage in Argentina. What kind of inhumane people would ever be that cruel to someone? Greedy, selfish people only. He also said without Steven Adler, there would never would have been a Guns N' Roses or the greatest rock album of all time. Adler did teach Slash his first guitar chord and gave him his first guitar. He also went on to say that Slash, Duff, and Axel have no heart, and that's why Steven has to go out and do his own thing. He said he loves his fans so much and he wants to play for each and every one of you. Do you actually think Steven Adler got sober and changed his entire lifestyle to sit around his house and do nothing? So if you guys want to read the entire statement, I've put a link to it down below. I think it's pretty safe to say that we're not going to be seeing Steven for a while, and probably in his forthcoming interviews, he's may have, have he may have to apologize for this, or maybe he's apologizing privately for this. This kind of reminds me of what happened before the Guns N' Roses reunion, where Slash's uh, brother got upset at some fans asking about a reunion, and basically called Axel fat, and then he had to apologize to Axel. So let's go on to our next news story. So speaking of Steven Adler, we have. Uh, some more hints that Steven Adler has been dropping about who his new singer is going to be. All he had to really say about his new singer was on Facebook. He said, I'm really excited to let the world know my new lead singer. Here's a hint. He's loved by millions and millions of Americans. He's one of the best live entertainers in the past decade. You will find out May 10th when we hit the stage at the world famous Whiskey A Go Go. Not playing around this time, we got groups for the whole world to see. So I've already given my you know guesses of who I think it is. I was thinking maybe Kid Rock, Scott Stapp, M Shadows, Sebastian Bach, Corey Taylor. You know, he says he's loved by millions and millions of Americans. Maybe it's a singer that's maybe not as popular outside of America. But as we get more information on this, I will keep you guys and gals up to date. Steven Adler is also going to be headlining the charity motor motorcycle ride for Ronnie Dio on May 7th. So just a couple days before the Whiskey A Go Go gig. Now I know Steven said that we won't find out who his new singer is until May 10th. But there's a strong possibility his new singer could show up at this charity gig. And we could end up seeing him, uh, who, who this, you know well-known singer is but as we get more information guys i'll keep you up to date so the um the actual charity raises uh, money for cancer research and uh, you guys can go to my uh, blog and see more information as well as uh, see the link on how to get tickets so we've got some duff mckagan news as well so duff took to twitter to announce that he will be interviewing actor sean penn on april 11th at the moore in seattle so sean penn's penned this new book no pun intended uh, called Bob Honey, who just do stuff. And it's been really panned by critics. It's gotten really bad reviews. He's had some bizarre interviews on Colbert's show and a few other shows. And, uh, you know, Sean Penn did an interview where he said, I wanted to get somebody who liked the book to interview me. I didn't want to get somebody who hated the book to interview me. So tickets are available now if you guys are interested. The link is on my blog. I'm kind of curious to see if anybody's going to videotape this. I'm not really a big Sean Penn fan. And, you know, the book hasn't really been piqued my interest at all. But let me know your thoughts in the, in the comment section below. So for you superhero fans, there's going to be a new Captain Marvel, move, Marvel movie coming out uh, starring Brie Larson. 
And there were some paparazzi photos from the set that showed Brie Larson wearing a Guns N' Roses Appetite for Destruction shirt. So some people are wondering, maybe we're going to see some love given to Guns N' Roses in the movie. I think the most recent example of a TV show having a bunch of Guns N' Roses references was Young Sheldon. I posted some photos of like, I think one of the kids was wearing a Guns N' Roses shirt. There's a poster of Axel in one of the kids' rooms as well. So as we get more information on this, I'll keep you guys updated. So Matt Sorum gave an interview to Loudwire where he talked about the future of Velvet Revolver. He talked about Duff and Slash going back to Guns N' Roses. As well as the, uh, he gave a little bit of a hint of when we can expect his upcoming book. Regarding his book, he was kind of shooting for early next year when we could possibly see it hit bookshelves. He also talked about Guns N' Roses reuniting. He said, well, I'm glad it finally happened. They're doing the catalog and they're out there playing. That's cool. And everyone's doing their own thing of the other guys. For me, I'm over here doing my own thing and doing this, my music and keeping this thing going. It's great for them and I'm happy for them. He also talked about Velvet Revolver. He's he said never say never regarding the future of Velvet Revolver, but I think it's pretty safe to say that that band is probably done. I was never really a big fan of Velvet Revolver. I like a handful of their songs, but I want to know from you guys, do you like Velvet Revolver and do you have any interest in seeing them coming back? Let me know in the comments section. So one former member of Guns N' Roses, Roberta Freeman, of the infamous duo Roberta, Tracy and Roberta, gave an interview recently where she talked about what it was like touring with Guns N' Roses and how she kind of got the gig. So. Roberta is right now on tour singing background vocals with a Pink Floyd cover band called Brit Floyd. She's also working on her own project later this year. She revealed that when she was younger she had a really bad stage fright. She's now over it. She also performed with a number of other big artists besides Guns N' Roses including Pink Floyd, Nile Rodgers and Keith Richards. So she talked about how she got the gig with Guns N' Roses. She was on tour with Cinderella when drummer Fred Curry told her about Guns N' Roses looking for a backup singer. Now, if you guys remember, Fred Curry filled in for some dates uh, where Steve Nadler wasn't able to make it back in the late 80s. And he's friends with Slash. So Fred was friends with Slash and played with Guns N' Roses, and Fred mentioned her name to Slash. So her impression of Guns N' Roses was that she heard them a lot on TV and over the radio. She said Welcome to the Jungle was playing everywhere, and that's kind of how she remembered the band. She compared Guns N' Roses to Led Zeppelin because of Axel's falsetto, and she admitted she wasn't actually a big fan of Guns N' Roses when she first joined the band. She was always more into Pink Floyd. She also said that Slash called Roberta and invited her to do, the, to do the gig. And Slash also talked about how they wanted to get another backup singer as well. So she ended up getting uh, Tracy Amos to come on. So she had previously worked with Tracy prior to Guns N' Roses. One thing she said that was kind of strange was that Axl Rose never showed up to any rehearsals. And she kind of started to worry a bit. She said once they got to the first show with the bigger band where they played in Massachusetts, she said that Roberta, she basically said that she hadn't seen or met Axl Rose at that point in time. So Roberta talked to Doug Goldstein and asked to talk to Axl. She didn't know how guarded the whole camp was and how they tried to keep Axl separate from the rest of the band. So the camp didn't like people talking to Axl and Roberta was persistent that she talked to Axl. So Doug Goldstein, who was Guns N' Roses manager at the time, finally gave in and said, okay, so she said Axel was so cool and, every, and okay with everything. She said he was very kind and complimentary and Axel felt the backup singers added so much more to the sound. She said Axel never said an unkind word to her. And she said sometimes management made it seem like Axel wasn't cool with a lot of things, but in reality he was. There was one time she singled out where Doug Goldstein uh, basically told her that Axel wasn't happy with, her, with some of her solos on Knocking on Heaven's Door. Axel walked by, overheard this, and said that he loved Roberta's solo. She also said that some people in the band weren't happy to see them since they were cramping their style. It was Axel who really wanted the backup singers. And it's kind of funny, Matt Sorum's done interviews where he said that the backup singers were kind of cramping his style. Roberta also said that she became a bigger fan of the band after performing with them after for so many nights. She also said she got along best with Gilby Clark and has kept in contact with him over the years. In fact, she's going to be singing on Gilby Clark's upcoming solo album along with Teddy Andriatis. Roberta also talked about uh, Teddy Andriatis, who we interviewed recently. She said that she hung out a lot with him and loved it. Lots of nights they'd be in the hotel lobby jamming on the hotel piano with Teddy. She said Duff McKagan is also a really sweet guy and a lot of people thought that she was having a relationship with Duff, but she wasn't and that wasn't true. She said that her and Matt Sorum got along okay and she said she's seen Slash a few years ago and he was basically really good to her. She also said she had an amazing experience with Guns N' Roses. She said in a lot of ways it was more rock and roll than Pink Floyd. 
She was also asked about whether any studio sessions were done with Guns N' Roses on the User Illusion Tour. She said there weren't, but there were some jam sessions with Teddy and Gilby and that was about it. She also talked about starring in the November Rain video and she said it was a very long video to shoot. She said the wedding day scene took a long time to shoot, there was lots of waiting and Roberta even talked about doing her own hair and makeup and picking out her own wardrobe for the music video. Her most fond memory of the Illusions tour was when the band played Paris in 1992, the infamous pay-per-view show, and she said that they got to actually hang out with Lenny Kravitz after the show, and they said that drinking champagne with Lenny Kravitz was one of the best experiences of her life. Lisa Maxwell, um, name also got brought up, she was one of the additional musicians. Uh, there was also this question about how did they come up with that name, the seven six horns so it was lisa maxwell who thought of the idea or sorry the nine seven six horns it was lisa maxwell who thought of the idea she said that lots of men in the audience would hold offensive and sexist signs targeting the backup singers and that's basically what she said in the interview i just saved you guys probably two hours of your life so you can thank me later so that does it for this week's guns and roses news thanks for watching be sure to hit the subscribe button and i also want to give a big thank you to our patrons who support our channel their names are listed in the description box below